Good morning. morning. Welcome to St. Anne's as we gather together in our Easter season on the octave of Easter, Divine Mercy Sunday. My name is Mary Pat Oliker, and I will be your lector for this most glorious celebration. For a week, Thomas was with his companions who had received grace from the risen Christ. And his disbelief faded, and his heart became filled with that same grace. And upon Jesus, seeing Jesus, he responded, my Lord and my God. Our celebrant this morning is Monsignor Elmer, and our homilist is Deacon Bob. Let us begin our Sunday Mass with an opening hymn, Hallelujah, Hallelujah, number 167. We will sing verses 1 and 3. Please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Good morning, everyone. Today is uh, one of those Sundays that has multiple titles to it, as we heard earlier. And uh, from the most ancient of times, it was the octave or eighth day of Easter. An octave in church history was designed to continue a great celebration like Easter or Christmas you know, over a whole week and uh, carry that attitude and mindset of the glory of that day. Uh, it's also called the second Sunday of Easter by the church officially and St. Pope John Paul II uh, gave this day the title of Divine Mercy Sunday uh, while he was the Holy Father. So let us uh, begin by recognizing the, the glory of this, of this day in the light of Easter and uh, recognize that the Lord extends to us through his passion and death and resurrection the joy of his mercy. Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. to people of goodwill, 
We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in our highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand, the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth, peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God, the Father, glory to God, glory to God, glory to God in the highest and on earth, peace on earth. Peace to people of goodwill. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast, kindle the faith of the people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed, that all may grasp and rightly understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, and by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Many signs and wonders were done among the people at the hands of the apostles. They were all together in Solomon's portico. None of the others dared to join them, but the people esteemed them. Yet more than ever, believers in God. Great numbers of men and women were added to them. Thus, they even carried the sick out into the streets and laid them on cots and mats so that when Peter came by, at least his shadow might fall on one or another of them. A large number of people from towns in the vicinity of Jerusalem also gathered, bringing the sick and those disturbed by unclean spirits and they were all cured. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His life is everlasting. Give thanks for the Lord for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy 
mercy endures forever. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. Give thanks for the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks for the Lord, for He is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the book of Revelation. I, John, your brother, who share with you the distress the kingdom, and the endurance we have in Jesus found myself on the island called Patmos because I proclaim God's word and gave testimony to Jesus. I was caught up in the spirit of the Lord, on the Lord's day and heard behind me a voice as loud as a trumpet which said, Write on a scroll what you see. Then I turned to see whose voice it was that spoke to me, and when I turned, I saw seven gold lampstands, and in the midst of the lampstands, one like the Son of Man, wearing an ankle-length robe with a gold sash around his chest. When I caught sight of him, I fell down at his feet as though dead. He touched me with his right hand and said, Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last, the one who lives. Once I was dead, now I am alive forever and ever. I hold the keys to death and the netherworld. Write down, therefore, what you have seen, and what is happening, and what will happen afterwards. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. be with you. And your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace 
be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Who sends you forgive are forgiven them, and who sends you retain are retained. Thomas called Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands and put my finger into the nail marks and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. And then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side. And do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God, And Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you might come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Easter is such a great time of year. We had, prior to Easter, 40 days of preparation and prayer and reconciliation. And then Holy Week starts out with Jesus entering into Jerusalem on Palm Sunday and with the reading of the Lord's Passion. And then Holy Thursday with the washing of the feet pointing to a service as a way of life. And during Holy Thursday, Jesus shared with his companions his Passover, his last Passover meal in which old traditions were performed and new new traditions given. And then Good Friday with veneration of the cross, Holy Saturday where darkness turns into light, and then Easter Sunday filled with hope. And it was great to see the church full, families, entire families. You know, everything seems to stop on Easter Sunday. There's no sports, there's no this, there's no that. So it was really good to see moms and dads and the kids and the college kids and the older kids visiting the church, praying together in community in celebration of Jesus conquering death. We are so much stronger in community when our families return to us and come to mass in prayer with all of us in community. Easter hope is about the discovery of God in the moment, in those around us, being true disciples of Jesus, being his hands and his feet in the example of Holy Thursday. Easter hope is about seeing Jesus in those around us, especially, especially within our families. Easter hope is about that everyday little thing that puts a smile on your face, and puts a smile on the face around you. Today, as Monsignor said earlier, is the octave of Easter as we celebrate Divine Mercy Sunday, to bring full attention to the unending mercy and the patience of our God, both knowing in our heads and experiencing in our hearts, this mercy is key to fully realizing our Easter hope. For a person unable to forgive has not yet known the fullness of love. And thus, only one who truly loves is able to forgive. At the foot of the cross, Mary saw her son offer himself totally. 
showing us what, what it means to love as God has loved us. And at that moment, she heard Jesus utter words, which probably reflects something that she had told him early on as a child. Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And with these words, Mary became, for all of us, the mother of forgiveness. Following in Jesus' example and by his grace, she herself could forgive those who killed her innocent son. Sometimes... It's hard to recognize the need for forgiveness in our lives, as well as the depth of the mercy that's afforded to us by our God. There's many examples in scripture of greatness of God coupled with the wake of our weakness, but all in the strength of grace. If you recall, Peter at the sea when Jesus filled his nets and Peter fell to his knees and said, Depart from me, for I'm a sinful man. And then in the book of Kings with Ezekiel, God encouraged him to continue on his journey. And at the wake of the cave, when God passed by in his greatness in that whispering wind, Ezekiel hit his face. And then John in the second reading today, caught up in the spirit, turned to see who was behind him, that voice, and fell to the ground. In each case, a feeling of unworthiness coupled with the recognition of greatness. Somehow, in some ways, we too are touched by God, just like Ezekiel, just like Peter, just like John, as we recognize our sinfulness or our own faults. And in this touch and in this presence of God, we recognize the unconditional love of God and its greatness. And in this touch, in the presence of God, we see ourselves not as worthy, and we too fall to the ground, maybe, and bury our heads. This is God working within our lives. And then, as with John in the book of Revelation, Jesus touches us and says to us, don't be afraid. I have things for you to do for our Father. Peter became a fisher of people. Ezekiel was sent back to anoint another prophet. And these examples show us a common thread in discovery of what it is that God has for us to do. And it all starts with recognizing the hand of God in our lives. The fullness of love, the fullness of peace, the fullness of mercy. And in today's gospel, we have Thomas. Thomas, after closing himself off to mercy and his non-belief, found and experienced the Holy Spirit and grace of Christ within his companions that they were granted in his absence. That led to him responding to Jesus, my Lord and my God. And in this same way, we, we are called to share our hearts, to share our spirit with those around us so that they too can proclaim, they too, our spouses, our children, maybe our grandchildren, our moms or our dads, our next door neighbor. We are the example for all of them so that they can proclaim through our spirit, through our grace afforded to us, my Lord and my God. Is that not the most important thing? That each of us know just how much God loves us and that this abundant love given freely is what keeps us whole especially, especially when we give it to one another. So to know this love is allow God to work in our hearts. To know this love is to 
consciously remove all the barriers, all the barriers to the grace of God and to allow that grace to permeate our hearts. And to know this love is to surrender completely, completely to the will of God. And when we discover grace and the presence of God from within, when we make that decision to walk with God, through grace we discover things about ourselves that perhaps maybe we already knew, but now we see them in a little bit different light, through the light of hope through the light of peace, and through the light of mercy. The celebration of Christ's resurrection at Easter gives us the hope and the confidence to, pro to profess our faith. So let us do so by declaring, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit, amen, with Mary, he became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in the Holy Catholic and Apostolic Church, I confess my baptism, forgiveness of sins. We are people who have not seen, as John refers to in that book of Revelation, and yet we are blessed because we still believe. With confident faith, then, we bring our concerns and our petitions now before our loving God. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. For the church throughout the world, that this Sunday of divine mercy be a time of awe and spiritual renewal for all. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. <clears throat> for the citizens of the Ukraine, that the presence and peace of God be with them as the world prays for peace in that region. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For Henry Edward Hamblin and his family, that the Holy Spirit fill their hearts through the holy waters of baptism. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. For the intentions we placed on, at the altar of our third grade for faith formation students, and that God continue to bless all of our faith formation students and their families. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the community of St. Anne's, that we all bear witness to the risen Christ and receive the Holy Spirit each time we are touched by his presence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, 
May they feel the healing hand of our God. And especially for Father Brian, Pat Burke, Teresa Crow, Dick Elliott, and all those listed in our prayer list. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. For all those who have died, marked with the cross, the sign of our faith, and especially for homebound parishioners and their families for whom this Mass is offered. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. The sanctuary light will be burning this month, this week, for the deceased members of our parish. And now we pray for the intentions we offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> Generous God, plant your precious gift of faith ever deeper in our hearts. All that we ask, we ask of you in the name of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord, now and forever. Amen. Our offertory hymn is 657, One Lord. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice and yours. Praise and glory to you for our good and for the loss of your church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblations of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day, above all, to praise you yet more gloriously when Christ, our Passover, has been sacrificed. 
For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death, and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, <clears throat> he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the cup of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, all the clergy, religious, and faithful. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the glorious apostles and martyrs and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
Savior's command, informed by the word of God, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the King, <coughs> power and the glory be yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you. My peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer to each other now a sign of peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Let's go to the altar of God, the 
God of our gladness and joy. Let us enter the courts of the house of the Lord and sing to the glory of God. Give praise with lyre and timbrel, with lute and sound of the harp, with the dance of the flute and oboe, give glory to the Lord. Let us go to the altar of God, the God of our gladness and joy. Let us enter the courts of the house of the Lord and sing to the glory of God. Give praise with harp and organ, with rousing beat of the drum, with the call of the bell and bagpipe. Give glory to the Lord. Let us go to the altar of God, the God of our gladness and joy. Let us enter the call of the house of the Lord and sing to the glory of God. Give praise to the creatures of heaven and all that dwell on the earth. Come and worship the God who made us and glance before the Lord. Let us go to the altar of God, the God of our gladness and joy. Let us enter the courts of the house of the Lord and sing to the glory of God. Let us go to the altar of God, the God of our gladness and joy. Let us enter the courts of the house of the Lord and sing to the glory of God. Give praise with blasts of trumpet, with noble sound of the horn. With the clash of the clinging cymbal, give glory to the Lord. Let us go to the altar of God, the God of our gladness and joy. Let us enter the courts of the house of the Lord and sing to the glory of God and sing to the glory of Let us go to the altar of God, the God of our gladness.
Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continuing effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everyone. So, two quick announcements. Um, for anyone who is interested in being an altar server, there is going to be a training after Mass today. We're going to move that training till next Saturday at 1130. Uh, if you have any questions or can't attend at that time, you can email Deacon Bob, deacon at saintinschurch.com, or you can see me after Mass and I will give him the message. Second announcement. We're going to do something new here at St. Anne's. On May 15th, we're going to have a chicken barbecue. Um, we'll be selling tickets after Mass next weekend and the weekend after. You're also welcome to uh, show up on the 15th and hope that there are some left. Uh, it'll be $15 for a half a chicken, coleslaw, a roll, and salt potatoes. Uh, again, if you have any questions about that, I will be over here after Mass as well. Thanks. Yeah, sounds like a good deal. <clears throat> All right. This is, it's called the St. Anne Fest, but if you see the sign, okay, you look at it real quick, it looks like Stan Fest, okay? You know, our custodian is retiring, so I thought at first, you know, this is the retirement party for Stan, you know? But <laughs> I just play tricks on you, okay. The Lord be with you. Let us bow our heads and pray, pray for God's blessing, responding amen after these invocations. May God, who by the resurrection of Christ, of his only begotten Son, was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, may he give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. May he, by whose redeeming work you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. And may you, who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith, by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. May the blessings of Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. This Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. Let us conclude our Divine Mercy Mass with a hymn, Alleluia, Alleluia, number 169. We'll sing verses 1 and 3. Thank you.